Hey, it's Dr. Trish Lee with another answer to your neurofeedback questions. And today is a big question. It surrounds the idea of what is the role that trauma plays in brain functioning? How can that be seen in a acute EEG brain map? And then lastly, how can neurofeedback address those needs? Okay, big question, let's break it down. First of all, in terms of how trauma shows up in brain functioning, we can see that on a QEEG brain map because trauma will change the way that a brain is performing and using electrical activity. That's what a QEEG brain map picks up. So whether the trauma be physical or emotional, there's a pattern that suggests that that is what is happening in the brain. It's correlated with trauma. So if you have a physical head injury and you actually hit your head, you're in a car accident, you hit your head on the dashboard and then you have a whiplash injury, that physical injury will show up in the brain map as blue areas, and I'll tell you what blue means in just a second, in the front where you actually hit your head, the coup injury, and in the back where the brain slammed up against your skull, the contra coup injury. Many times that one can be worse. But the idea is when we see blue on the QEG brain map, that's an indication of low absolute power. Basically those areas have been knocked offline in terms of how they're using electrical activity because of that physical injury that has created trauma in the brain. So we can see that and I'll tell you how neurofeedback addresses it in just a second. First, let's talk about emotional trauma. So people ask me all the time, what is emotional trauma? And that's different for all people. It can be low grade trauma, verbal abuse across your entire lifetime that adds up and creates this trauma pattern in the brain. Or it can be one significant event that really traumatizes the brain as in PTSD most times. But the idea is that the brain again slows itself down. And it does that purposely and meaningfully to protect the person from the traumatic events they have been sustaining for a long time or that they went through. So when the brain slows itself down, it's not processing that information in real time because if it did, it would wound the person. The person is not able to deal with it quite yet. So how neurofeedback addresses these trauma patterns, and just to be clear, the emotional trauma pattern it may look fairly similar. It does look different than a physical trauma pattern on EEG. It affects the brain differently. It's more widespread than these very um, focal points of injury in a physical trauma. But what neurofeedback does is the QEEG brain map identifies which areas of the brain have been knocked low in terms of a head injury or are performing slow in terms of emotional trauma. And clearly that's simplified. But we can see what's happening in the brain and then through neurofeedback, we put sensors on the areas of the head that are impacted so that those brain areas can be taught to make more of perfect processing speed. So if someone has suffered an emotional trauma and they have not yet dealt with it, what it will do is it'll speed the brain up so that it's now processing information in real time. So we have a psychologist on our team at Lee Brain and Spine, and if you're working with a neurofeedback practitioner that's not in our office, you wanna make sure if you have suffered an emotional trauma that you have a psychologist in place or a mental health professional in place to help you deal with those traumas once your brain is working at a better speed. That's a pivotal part to your long-term recovery. In terms of physical injury, as those brains come back, brain areas come back online, your brain will start working better and you will start feeling and performing better. And honestly, neurofeedback is one of the only things, I would say the only thing, that can really bring all those areas back online after a physical injury. And many people in the arena of brain functioning believe that injuries that haven't been resolved are at the core of many people's psychological and physiological symptoms and their issues. So if you have had a head injury, it's wise to get it looked at and taken care of through neurofeedback. Okay, that was a big question with multiple parts and I hope I was able to give you those answers and stay tuned because I'm gonna provide for you more answers for your neurofeedback questions. Thanks.